the way to become a, a good leader is to fail. Like that's probably the biggest thing is somebody that is okay with failing and willing to accept those failures and process through those failures and admit that you're wrong. I think that any leader that is unwilling to admit that they're wrong or that they fell short, I think is very, very just it's sad, you know? And so I've had many moments where I've like come to, you know, those that are, you know, lack of a better term underneath my, you know, underneath me. And I've just had to say, Hey, I missed it. Hey, I did it this way, but I shouldn't have done that. Hey, I should have listened to you there. Or, Hey, you know, or, Hey, we had a little spat, you know, and at the end of the day, you know, what I decided is what we decided. Do you know what I mean? And so I do want to still come back to you and acknowledge that I heard what you said. But this is why I still went with my decision. Hey man, you want to talk about God? What did you do in LA? <laughs> we went to... Um we were working with um like operation something and it was like <sighs> it was actually really cool um so like we went to it was like in riverside or no chino hills is where we were mm -hmm. and there was like a family that like started a gazebo mm -hmm. right outside their house and anybody that was in that gazebo at breakfast lunch or dinner time yes they would feed them hmm. and so that's mm -hmm. how it started and so like they were doing like a a piece mm -hmm. on the Christian channel. And so we went there for a mission trip and then eventually we're just with them the whole time. And we were doing all the film ops and stuff. We did stuff on skid row. Mm -hmm. It was cool. It was cool. It was cool. It was cool. Well, thanks for being here. You're welcome, man. <laughs> <laughs> Great start. No, we're definitely going to start with that story. I'm in, man. I'm in. There's a lot more to it, but that's just a short version. Los Angeles. Never been to LA. Never? Never? Not even once? Wow. Not ever Southern California? No. Wow. No. What's Southern California? What is that? I, I, uh, to me, that's LA and then San Diego. Oh, I thought you said you've been <clears throat> to Southern California. I've been to Northern California, but oh, not nice. Southern California. Right. NorCal, as, as they say. NoCo? <laughs> NorCal. <laughs> NorCal? NorCal. Yeah, they call it NorCal, yeah. right? I mean, it makes sense. I'm from NorCal. So, I want to start off. <laughs> Because I want, because we're, we're diving into some territory here. Territory. We want to start off with a, a pastor hot seat. Oh yeah, oh boy, a little pastor hot seat. Um, okay, we're excited okay. for this. Not very few of them are faith related. No, so you're good. I don't think any oh, of them. Right. Are. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, no problem. Bring it in, man. Let's the, go. the first question is: Do you prefer to go by Pastor Josh Clear or Reverend Josh Clear? Mm. Joshua that's such, Clear. That's such a funny. That's such a funny question. Um. So, A, I, I come from a very charismatic background, mm -hmm. okay? And so, in the charismatic community, you do not just call someone Josh. Like, you don't just call someone, you know, a pastor. You don't call him Josh. Like, it is Pastor Josh or right. Reverend yeah. Josh, like that's what you call them. So I like any pastors and stuff that are in my circle. I refer to them as pastor. Like I'll always, yeah, yeah, always have, always will. That's um even if they're same level or like like they're younger than me, you know, or they've been in faith for a long time. Doesn't matter. Like I still mm -hmm. call them pastors. Just an honor thing there. Culture of honor is what I always came from. So would always they have that title. With me though, I have. It's funny that you say that because there's been a recent shift where personally, I don't care what you call me, call me, whatever, call mm -hmm. me, you know, Josh, pastor, Josh, bing bong, whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> like it's your choice, you know, but it's been really cool. Cause in our church in the last like couple months, there's been mm -hmm. a dramatic shift where there was a lot of people that were like, Josh is my friend. Josh is my close friend. Josh is my leader. And a lot of them came to the conclusion of like, yeah, he's my friend, but he's also my pastor. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of people that have like made the decision to go from, I, I know we're friends and I know we're mm -hmm. brothers, but you are also my pastor. Yeah. And so a lot That's of people cool. have shifted and started calling me Pastor Josh. Um, I really don't care, um, but there is something beautiful in our personal community right now with everyone been referring to me as Pastor Josh. Like that's been a really cool thing to mm -hmm. kind of watch because it just shows that like, 
everybody's on board but yeah and yeah, also, people call me rev for a while just don't ever call me pj bro that's all i actually care about like pastor josh like don't call me pj like yeah. that's that's a big no no what yeah. why just hate that pj it just sounds that, goofy sounds like a drink in college like, out of trash cans there you see like there something. you go yeah mm -hmm. Put on to go to sleep. See, that's what you thought when you said that. So, like, hey, PJ is coming Not to the stage to speak, and you're like, trash cans. Right. Not you as know? honest. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> right. Like, it's just like, you know, like it just doesn't work. Yeah. I think it's cool too, though. The part of like, I similarly, mm -hmm. like, growing up in a more charismatic, non-denominational mm -hmm. church, like everybody like I never heard anybody just call my dad Will oh, or no. Bill. It no was way. not a thing. Um, and it's cool though in that story that like, I just think like with like authority and that kind of like honor, like you get it several ways and oh, yeah. sometimes like it's this spot like you're like hey everybody's going to call me pastor josh oh, yeah. or like that but the, the community kind of just came to that yep. realization well, I, could even, like, oh. I could even tell you how it happened it was actually really cool so pastor nick he's a he's a pastor that's out and like um uh, kind of like the if he, if you said the name i'd remember it but it's out near like uh what's that the hills mall something hills South mall hills? what those mall no century one mall no it's something like that it's where we West went and saw um, we saw a movie there once a long time ago. Um, the Cranberry. Owen, no, something Mills Mall. It's Pittsburgh by, Mills Mall. Pittsburgh. The, yeah, so it's, it's out that oh, way. Okay. Fox yeah, Chapel yeah so whatever, Pastor whatever. Nick's great dude. It, like, like if he ever sees this, I'm sorry, but Pastor Nick's like, Pastor Nick's short compared to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like 5'8". Mm -hmm. So process that one. All right, but he is awesome. <laughs> um, and so he actually came. We had a men's retreat where we just gathered up pretty much all the men in our church, had everybody there. And, um, it was awesome. It was just a really cool weekend. And it was like that aha moment for so many people, but pastor Nick came in, preached the last night, um, or second to last night. And he was like, you know, he's just preaching. And like, I said, Hey man, these guys where they're at probably about 30 minutes, maybe 45, you know? So about an hour and 15 minutes later, he's still going. And it was like, everyone's on the edge of their seat though. Yeah. So I was like, this is good. So I, you know, kept it going, but he literally at one point just, he was just like, I feel to show you guys what proper culture is supposed to look like, essentially. And he just preached for an hour and a half on like what culture is supposed to look like. And he said, he literally stood me up in front of all these guys and said, you might think this is Josh, mm -hmm. but this is not Josh. This is Pastor Josh. This is your leader. This is who God has called and placed over you. And I'm sitting there like. Like half like, yes, this is awesome. I'm glad you're saying this, but also I'm just like, Ugh, like not, not all eyes on me. And he felt that. And afterwards he kind of talked to me and he was just like, he was like, Hey, listen, like you are called to be the visionary leader of this place. You are called to lead these men, um, into battle. And so take your rightful authority mm. and do not shy away from that. And so I was like, all right, I guess I'll be Pastor Josh. <laughs> you know, like whatever, man. You know, like it was just like, all right. But it was a really cool, it was a really cool yeah. shift. What is that? Like, I, what did he talk about? And like, what culture shifts have you seen in your church other than Pastor Josh? Absolutely. Um, whoo, this is going to be fun. Um, so we've had, uh, there's been huge shifts in our church just, um, since August of last year. So as of, um, so just a little background about our church, Lightning Church. Um, we announced that we were starting the church in, um, uh, it was like March 7th, 2020. Mm -hmm. Good timing. Yeah, yes. right? Yep. Perfect. Really so definitely, definitely leading of the Lord. <laughs> and so like, you know, we announced we're planting a church. Two weeks later, COVID happens. It was our... We were, we were about to have our second, like, you know, core team meet up, hang out. We announced we were starting in September, you know, all that different stuff. And so, you know, cool. So COVID happens, yeah, Easter's coming up. I'm like, Hey, everybody's online. Why don't we just try it? You know? So we got some, you know, cameras. I think we literally borrowed cameras from you and literally just filmed it like filmed it, put it up on Easter. We had like 400 plus people show up. Like, like I, I dude people gave on that Sunday and we didn't really have our giving set up. And then like, I saw the number and I was like, people are giving this much money to us. Like we, we're nobody <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Just like, this is crazy. People believe in us. Cool. And so we continued online and then we took a leap of faith. We saw a building that was downtown. That was uber duper cheap. It's not where we wanted to be, but we were like, you know what? Hey, this is cheap. Let's go for it. And so um, we did that. We did a 12 hour live stream to raise $30,000 to 
because we needed all the equipment, sound, everything. Mm -hmm. We did a huge thing and we raised 30 K in 12 hours. Unbelievable. All right. So it was like a lot, it was Amazing. like an old school, like telethon type <laughs> thing, like please give and it had like a little banner at the bottom, like please give, be a part of the mission. Like it was just so cool. And like, we had like just people coming on talking just like we're doing now. And it was like really cool, really powerful, mm -hmm. like the heart of the church and all that stuff. So then we go to, it's a really long version to get to what you asked, <laughs> but it'll set some context here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am a little aware. So um, <laughs> don't you just love it when people aren't <laughs> like, the like they just start going off and you're like, I didn't even, I didn't even ask you that. And then at the end you're like, so yeah, do you want to answer the question <laughs> now, please? <laughs> and so, all right. So we're like there and like we start downtown. It's great. We start having some, and like, dude, during COVID, so we, we officially started that building in like, I forget when it was in 2020, but it, it, I, I can't remember when it was, but it was like right when it was like on the line of like, should mm -hmm. people be meeting or not, you know, type mm -hmm. deal. Mm -hmm. And so we started meeting in person and it was like sporadic. Like one week you had 70 some people. The next week you had like six people show up. Like it was yeah. unbelievable. I'm like, my serve team is like 30 people, but there's some weeks where there's six people in the room. How does this math work? You know what I mean? Like what's going on? And so, um, you know, a lot of just ups and downs, all this different stuff. And then, you know, we were doing pretty good and giving was great. People were showing up like God's like, we're just seeing people that a lot of people that were non-church, you know, not a lot of church like background, people that were getting saved, radically saved people like coming in. There's a guy that came in that literally had like, like he wore shorts that were really short and on his kneecaps, it said the F word on both of them <laughs> on his arm. It said like the S word and like all this different stuff. Like it was like, this dude was rough looking and it was just like, but he was there and he was connecting with us. And he's like, this is awesome. My wife at one point was like, he looks a little bit scary. Like, should I be nervous? And like all this stuff. I was like, now he's harmless. Like I feel like the Lord's saying that like, this is awesome. So I just have to stop. I'm just like, yeah. Like, what kind of situation you got to get be in to put, those two words on your knees, dude. Like every time I you get on your knees, you're just like, ah. <laughs> just like, like what's happening? Every time you get up, what's like, happening? You're like, <laughs> like, this is crazy, man. <laughs> what like, are you doing? Gun. <laughs> um, you know, but yeah, it is what sorry, it is, yeah. man. No, tomato, tomato, you know, whatever you want to put on your kneecaps, go ahead. <laughs> and so, you know, so this, you know, so like all this stuff we have, you know, we have people coming in with church hurt, like people that are like, you know, I feel burned, this, this, and this. So I'm coming here now. And like, you know, so like, uh, you know, you're just dealing with so many high emotions, so many different things, but it was beautiful because we, we didn't have a lot of transfer growth. Now, with that being said, it would have been sweet to have a lot of transfer growth, but we just had a lot of people that were broken, hurt, and just looking for a safe haven. And it was really cool. Um, and so he had all that going on. And then, you know, at, towards the, it was the beginning of the year. We always did the 12 hour live stream every year. So this is the second year now that we're about to do this. And this was to do our miracle offering for the year. And I go and right as I'm about to like press record, start recording, the Lord's like, Hey, um, I know you've been looking for buildings in Robinson and there's nothing available. I know you've been, you know, like looking at different things and like you found great stuff, but the price is way out of your budget. But, uh, you're telling them today that you're going to Robinson mm. and I'm like, no, <laughs> like I uh, don't want to do that. And so I just, you know, in faith just said, we're moving to Robinson and, you know, you know, so many cool little things happen to, you know, make that happen. But essentially like we had no business being in the building that we're in for the price that we're in, but we were blessed um, to be mm. able to have that and got connected. They built out everything for us, put it into the price of the rent. Right. Um, I gave them the budget that we had. They said, that's too low. And then came back and said, okay, we'll make it happen. So it's just a blessing, man. And um, so we started in Robinson. So to get to your question, yes. finally. So what happened? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the, put, this is where right now you put up the SpongeBob right, right. five hours <laughs> later. That's where you put that up. <laughs> like, and so, you know, so we're so in August, we moved to Robinson and you would think that this would be exciting. Mm -hmm. You know, parking. We're not downtown. You got right. parking. The, the space is better, bigger. You have padded chairs, not steel, you know, not steel hurt your butt buns chair. You know what I mean? Right. Like. It was like, dude, like, this is awesome. Um, but man, you just had, you just had people that just weren't on board for that, you know? So you had some people kind of exodus during that time. And then you had people that were like, we're even more bought in now. So that started to happen. 
And then what I can really say that's happened between August and now is that the there's a lot of people that you I would on paper I never would have said they're the most loyal. Mm. They are the most bought into the vision <clears throat> and they are going to make the biggest impact here. The there was many people that I didn't have them on that list mm. that are now doing that. Yeah. They are the vision. They are the heartbeat. They are the most loyal. Mm -hmm. And the ones that I was like, these guys, they're in, they're sold out. They're ready for this thing. Like those were the ones that made the decision to either move on, made the decision to get angry, bitter, frustrated, mm -hmm. um, hurt, you know, all these fill in the blanks. But the most layman's terms that I can put it in is the right people left at the right time and the people that you weren't the people that you didn't even have these high expectations on they just stepped up yeah and so yeah. we've just seen that the right people in the right places um it's not to say that you know people are going to get upset people are going to get mad people are going to get angry things happen you know it's life it's church it's nothing's going to be perfect we know that but it's just so beautiful to to see people making a true impact and being sold out to a vision mm. like it's pretty that's super cool. pretty unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And that transition of like, Josh is my friend and I'm helping him with this thing, yeah. switching over to this is my pastor and I'll follow him anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of people that made that decision. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm not even prepared to ask you, but it's such an honor that you're doing this, right. you know? And so we've just seen growth up the wazoo. We just had like 16 people get water baptized last Sunday. And like, it's, it's just like unbelievable, man, that just to be able to see like what God is doing and, you know, we're nowhere near where we'd like to be, but we're seeing impact. We're seeing people grow together. People raise up like, you know, so that's been like the crucial thing, man. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I think, you know, I'm always here to play devil's advocate, right? Oh, absolutely. So, um, when you like, I think I know what your answer is going to be, but for the people out there, right. When you say the right people left, yeah, like at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Some people out there could be like, he's a pastor and he like wants people to leave his church. Oh, like, yeah, no. could you like actually explain like what you mean by that? It's so much easier to say it now, hmm. obviously. Um, it's so easy to to not mention, you know, me holding my wife in bed as she just, you know, cries as hard as she can because the person that she cares about is pissed off at her for no reason. Mm. Um, that there's people that have left our church bitterly, angrily, more frustratedly, like all the above. And we're sitting here going like, we've done everything we can for you. Like we love you. And so when I say the right people left, <sighs> I wish that that was easier. Mm. I, I, I wish that that was as cool as it sounds, you know, or as easy as it sounds. Um, no, it was a lot of, I'm ready to quit. I'm ready to give up a lot of, are we, should we keep doing this moments? Mm -hmm. Um, because it's, there's some people that like, we thought, we thought they, we thought they'd be with us forever. Yeah. We thought we'd be right by our side. You know, I thought that at the end of the day, those were the ones that I was going to be able to lean on, you know? And so it was very hard you know, to watch that. And so there was many that, not many, there was just situations where I was like, I didn't know that them being here wasn't the best. And this is not, mm -hmm. and this is not a, right. they're terrible people right. or they're awful. No, Absolutely. it's just, sometimes you feel you, you got to yeah. move on. Sometimes you're called to something else. Sometimes, Hey, the vision, your vision, like you might not be able to come underneath the vision of me as your pastor. And so, but you need to go get under a vision of a pastor that you can get right. under, mm -hmm. you know? And so every conversation that I ever have with anybody, I'm like, Hey, go to church, serve your guts out, find a vision that you can get behind. Like go, mm -hmm. go, go be there, go, you know, sell out 100% to that vision and stuff like that. Um, the hardest moments is when I just, they're not going to church anymore, Yeah, you know? And so like, mm -hmm. yeah, that eats at me. Cause I play that game in my head over and over and over again. Like, what could I have done? One more text, one more call, one more this, one more that, you know? And it's like yeah. at the end of the day, like, hey, they got to move on. Like they got to, you know, do that. So 
yeah, to play that, that card. Like, no, I, I never wish that people would leave. I wish they'd stay with us forever. That's, that's sure. a selfishness in me. Right. I want them to be here, but Hey, some people have left where it was like, Hey, it's a busy season. I got this going on. I got this. I have to move on to something else. Uh, I mean, like we're, we're a startup church. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm like, Hey, like where you're at in your faith and where your marriage is at, where your kids and this and that, Hey, you don't need to be in the front lines starting a brand new church with us. Go mm -hmm. to a yeah. church where you don't have to grind this type of way. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's not a knock on anything else. It's just, Hey, like, man, it would be nice for me to, instead of going to a hundred and some church mm -hmm. where like, it's all hands on deck. We're startup. We're just getting started. You know, it's just like a business. It's like, sure. would you rather be a part of a startup or an established business? You know what I, I mean? mean? There's pros and cons. To it, each, well, that's what I'm saying. You know, but it comes down to some people, right. Right. it's going to be more sure. pros yep. on one side, more, you know? And so, yeah. So when I say the right people, you know, left, I, it's, it's, you but, know, yeah. that's just a very easy way to right. say it, but yeah, man, it's just, it's, it's right now we have people that I never would have thought that they, mm. like, bro, I'm leading worship right now. Right. I never Up thought there. I'd be leading worship. Like, like you know, it's the season. It's the season that we're in. We know it's yeah. not going to be a long season, but the more that I've seen, like the fastest growing church right now in America is Union Church, Pastor, pastor Stephen Chandler, phenomenal pastor, phenomenal leader. And they, he's young. He's like two years older than me. Okay. Fast growing church. They're in, they're in, no, I, for some reason, I thought they're in Carolina. No, they're in Baltimore. Sorry. Yeah. They started in Baltimore. And so, but they have a, they have a location in Carolina. And so, but they're in Baltimore, all this stuff. But he, he just said it in a podcast and I was like, no way. He's like for four years, he stepped in and led worship because mm -hmm. he wanted mm -hmm. to establish the culture of what worship need to look like in their space. So I'm like, oh, even more reason for me to lead worship right now. It's so <laughs> annoying. So, yeah. but it's, you know, it is what it is. Do you think that, um, you know, you've been in a spot where you've been a part of churches for a long time mm -hmm. and sowed a lot into churches, a church, oh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. uh, and then God put a call on your life and thought to go plant your own church. Yeah. Sorry. And so you're in this startup space having, you know, now a couple of years in and having to you and your wife go through some of the, I don't know if it's hurt is the right word, but like the challenge, the disappointment, the, the of, growing of, pains, of, of, yeah. of pe and specifically the people that you have brought alongside of you at the startup stage, kind of or people just getting hurt because like yeah. everybody knows people leave churches. Like yeah. that happens, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but now that it is that you it's you and your wife yeah. dealing with those relations and seeing that. Yeah. Do you think it's did it lead you to change the way you viewed things five, six years ago? Do you feel like you have more empathy in those situations to what other people went through or has it, has it changed, I guess, the way you look at it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that like my whole, my whole life in ministry has been to just, I really bought into the truth that the way I serve my leader now is how they will serve me later. Hmm. I always bought into that. So how I serve my leader now is how I will want like serve the way that I want them to serve me later. Hmm. When I am in that position, gotcha. I want people that are going to be like that. So like, you know, my heartbeat was always like, what is the dream? What is the vision? I will freaking make that happen. Like that was always my heartbeat. And so, yeah, like coming into this, coming into this season of like seeing the hurt and stuff like that. I thought, I thought it was going to be different. Mm -hmm. Right. I thought it was going to be different. And so a few things that like really happened pretty, not necessarily early on, but like when you sit down with like leaders and pastors that started the way that I started, you know, they're going like, Hey, like, you know, the people that are with you right now, they probably won't be with you at the end of the year. And I'm like, yeah, right. No, like they, <laughs> that's my boy, right. you know, like they'll be with us and like all this different stuff. And, yeah. you know, and like you quickly realize that like, like, dang it, they're right. You know? And like, that's like, and so like, you know, and, and half, half of learning true leadership is you just have to experience it for yourself. You know what I mean? Like sometimes mm. you just do. Mm. And, you know, so, um, I think that it was like, I think you have it in the back of your head that they might leave. Um, but what you definitely don't have in your mind at all is the way that they'll leave. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people just leave really. They're just mean mm -hmm. and it's really hard. 
Um, and so for me to look back on, you know, kind of the past experiences that I've had with churches, like, you know, I've served under leaders that had great, obnoxiously over the top, phenomenal vision where I'm like, I'm like, I don't even know how we're going to do that, but I'm so in to figure it out. And I've served under leaders that didn't have any vision Yeah. that, that they, they, they didn't know where their next <laughs> step was. And I'm trying to like push cast, not them. even a vision. I'm just trying to help them because I'm like, I'm called to serve you. I'm not called to push my agenda. I'm called to serve you. Mm. And so all those different types of things. Um, yeah, I just really bought into that, that idea of like, you know, serve now the way that you'll want somebody else to serve mm -hmm. you later, you know? And so, um, but what's so funny is like, man, like when I think about it, man, I, I just, I have some people that are serving underneath me now. Like this was my prayer. Um, two things. I was praying for a Josh clear and a John Vecchio. So John Vecchio was at the church that I was at you guys were all there. So, but the church that I used to go to, um, John, I came in and I was like college and youth and I just ran the show. It was awesome. John Vecchio came in and got like right where I capped off at that age. That's where John picked up and crushed it. And so I was like, I need a Josh. I need a John. That's what I need. Mm -hmm. I kept praying for that. And that was my prayer. And, but what's so funny is, is that I think about me when I was young in leadership at any place that I came into, I was probably never looked at as this guy's going to shake it up. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I don't think I was ever viewed as that or looked at as, as that. And what's so interesting now is that I have people that are, they're driving this thing at lightning church and I'm going, when they came in, I didn't see that on them, yeah. but God knew, mm -hmm. do you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And so I'm sitting here praying for something fresh, something new. He's like, you got something. I'm right. just, I'm, I got him in the kettle right now, baby. Yeah. You know, that's interesting too. And it's not, it's a normal thing. I think you look at those kind of like people that have, you have like past examples or past experiences of people oh, yeah. that amplify the things that you think you'll need to be on your team. Oh, heck so yeah. that's what you're asking for. And the whole time. God's like, you don't actually need another Josh Clear. Yep. Yeah. You don't even be like, you need yep. this person. Yep. And they're not who you're looking for, but yep. they're right in front of you. Yep. And when you need them the most, they're going to step up because yep. that's just what's inside their heart. Oh, yeah. That's what they're called to do. And like, oh, yeah. But we have like these templates oh, that yeah. we want to put people in. Be like, hey, oh, dude. It worked what? for us. So that's got to be what works over here, too, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Like one yeah. of my biggest, like, like influencers, like in, like in our space, one that's really driving the culture right now is a, you know, almost 50 year old dude construction worker just getting it done and he's the guy that's driving our culture he doesn't work i actually he did wear an essentials hoodie once and i was I like this that. is this is lit <laughs> <laughs> like, i don't say lit but it was lit and so but it was like but no dude just dresses the way he dresses acts the way he acts and like but his his you know and then there's another guy right now that's like in his like um, I think he's like mid fifties. Um, okay. So have you guys seen, uh, is it Shazam Shazam? It's like the, yes. it's Shaq? the is, is no <laughs> red suit, the lightning bolt. That's <laughs> what's, is that Shazam? I think it's Shazam, right? The, the, what's the guy, the kid that becomes a superhero? No, I think you're yeah, right. I think you're right. Shazam. But I think that's Sh Shazam, but you're thinking of like the old school. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm talking well, about? Well, there's a, a well, isn't there a debate on if that's real or not? No, it's totally real, dude. Well, At least the internet says it was called real. Kazam. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, there, it Kazam. Is. there it is. But like, isn't there like a theory that like everybody thinks that Sinbad was in it or something? Or there was a genie movie with Sinbad or something? I thought Kazam it, was a genie. It is. Yes. Is there, but uh, it's but it's with Sinbad, not Shaq. Or it is with Shaq. There's like a theory what? where we all think no, that Shaq is something. in Shaq was in Kazam. Unless it's not Shaq. Well, you're saying no, it's Shazam. Wrong. It's Shazam was. Right, it's not bad. Shaq. <laughs> what was that? Shazam. Shazam would call him Big Diesel. Big Diesel. <laughs> Big Superman. Diesel. Shazam was a movie in the early '90s where Sinbad did play a, a genie as well. There's two. There's Kazam and Shazam. Matt. Yeah. Uh, so, but wait, Shazam's not real though. Right. Yeah, that's a myth. It's yeah, not that's real. a. Th that's a. It's just what like it's just movie? like one of those like Berenstein Bears and Berenstein Bears. Right. It's not Berenstein. Right. It's Berenstein. 
No, you just said the same oh, I thing. I say Bernstein. No, 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 no. It's Bear. spelled different. Yeah. But we all thought it was Bernstein, but it's Berenstein. No, I said the, Bernstein. It's the last letter. It's it's a it's spelled with an A instead of an E. No. Yes, I promise you. It's stain instead of steam. Look it up. Look it up back there. Can we produce? Joe Rogan. Look it up. Bear Berenstein versus Berenstein. Yeah, that sounds familiar. But it's something like obnoxious like that. It is yeah. it is A I N. Right. But people think it's E I N. Right. Because it is. It should have been. It, it is. There was there are like That's weird pictures online so of like weird. old school stuff. This is where totally you pop there. this up right now on the screen. Right. Other uh, another great movie by uh Sinbad that he was actually in, First Kid. Are you sure that he was in it? That yeah, he was in it. First Kid yeah, was great. I, 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 He's a bodyguard for the president. I was son. sick it's a one a... day from school. Sick and my or like mom, actually sick. I was actually sick and my mom rented it from Eagle, <laughs> from Eagle Video. Love you don't know what that no. is, Eagle. but you know. We remember family video. Eagle, Eagle Video. We have Eagle Video. We first so video. so you've been a giant eagle, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in Giant Eagle back in the day, <laughs> right? They had like if a blockbuster. You, if you went, it was called Eagle Video. Uh -huh. I G G L E uh -huh. Eagle Video. <laughs> Because that's how games are saying it. Eagle video. <laughs> but it was like, yeah, just like the old school, like, you know, you go in, you got the tapes behind it. But yeah, it was, yeah. No. But okay, we Shazam. Right. So back to Shazam, the reason I'm bringing that up. So you know the. Oh, Kazam. The, the, nice. Kazam, Shazam, whatever <laughs> it is. So the, the kid is part of like a, a, an orphanage. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, there's this family that goes to our church where they, like, the parents of that, like, I, in my head, like, he, like this guy is mm -hmm. that parent. Mm -hmm. So he wears like goofy, awesome shirts, button up <laughs> shirts that are really loud every Sunday. Yep. His wife is amazing. And then they have a um, like 22 year old tall black son and they're mm -hmm. both white. Mm -hmm. And then they have two little petite white girls that are their daughters. Mm -hmm. Love that. And so you're like, what's going on here? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. what's happening here? And, um, but he was adopted when he was one and then they had the two girls later and stuff like Man, that. But, so cool. but he's been like, he's been coming and like, dude, I'm talking like he leads worship from the third row. I love this. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, sure. and it's just like, he leads our church into an intimate time of worship mm -hmm. from the third row. And it's been like, and just his presence is a difference yeah. maker. You know, it really is. And um, yeah, man, you just start to see that. You just start to see people show up, do stuff. Like, like I, like I literally had a moment like two weeks ago where um, I found out that a bunch of guys were at the church doing something. And I was like, what are they doing? You know? And then they're like, Hey, uh, we spent this, this, and this, and it, we're, don't worry, we're paying for it. And essentially every wire that was in our church, they paid to hide them. So they literally just like bought this, that, whatever. They ran snakes, yeah. whatever, because they wanted to hide every wire in the place. And they made the decision to do that. That's cool. Good for them. Bro, I wasn't a part of it. Yeah. I didn't say, but they they but they understood the vision of like, yeah. hey, we don't want loose wires hanging around. Yeah. Like we don't want people to see blemishes. Like we want to create an an atmosphere of excellence, you yeah. know? And so if if the wires are just hanging around, like, you know, what does that say about us? What does it yeah. say about yeah. how we treat God and like all that stuff? So like, you know, we've got that from you. We're gonna do it, you know? So yeah. they're spending their own money, their own time, their own efforts to make this thing yeah. happen. It's just super cool. I think the first thing I think about there is like, you know, leadership comes in tears. Yeah. And ultimately, like, so if you're like leading the church or there, but then this ability, I think, for good leaders, and I'd yep. be interested to ask this as a follow up question to yeah. uh, talk about good leadership, but uh, it's about the people that you have under you that oh, you yeah. empower your subordinate leaders. Because oh, yeah. somebody in that group of guys that gets everybody together, there there are some leaders in that group oh, yeah. that are bringing people together. Absolutely. And, and, having people come along so like you've talked about leadership several times now you brought it up um <laughs> what do you what do you what have you learned what do you think uh like asking like the qualities of good of a good leader yeah and like where do you go to find them like are you reading about leadership or you how yeah. are you kind of like yeah um all right remember both those questions sure. ask me the first one remember the second one what's the first question oh, no. <laughs> i'm really bad at that yeah. so uh, like, where do i go to for leadership that's the second one what's the first one and just kind of what like you good qualities of leadership? like you define like yeah. for you like good quality i mean dude i mean 
what I would have said at 21, what I would have said at 25, what I would have said at 30, what I would have said now is like all vastly different. Um, because like when I was young twenties, like in ministry, I knew it all. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. it's like, there's, there's, you know, I, and like, that's back when like, like I was like, leadership to me was listening to Judah Smith on a cassette tape. You know what I mean? Like, that's like, you know, that was like leadership back then. You know what I mean? And like, I mean, just, uh, um, what's it called? Um, next generation leader by Andy Stanley. Um, mm -hmm. I suggest that anybody no matter where you are, ministry or not, read that book once a year. It is a game changer in, in how you view leadership. And that was obviously a huge thing um, from that. Um, but a big thing for like, like what do I feel is a good leader? Well, the things that I have, the things that I've experienced in process is a lot of like, oh, this is probably not what a good leader is. You know, um, I've had many moments of that where I could be, you know, I can be a good leader. So like the way to become a, a good leader is to fail. Like that's probably the biggest thing is somebody that is okay with failing and willing to accept those failures and process through those failures and admit that you're wrong. I think that any leader that is unwilling to admit that they're wrong or that they fell short, I think is very, very just, it's sad, you know? And so yeah. I've had many moments where I've like come to, you know, those that are, you know, lack of a better term underneath my, you know, underneath me. And I've just had to say, Hey, I missed it. Hey, I did it this mm -hmm. way, but I, I shouldn't have done that. Hey, I should have listened to you there or Hey, you know, or Hey, we had a little spat, you know, and at the end of the day, you know, what I decided is what we decided. Do you know what I mean? And so I do want to still come back to you and acknowledge that I heard what you said, yeah. but this is why I still yeah. went with my decision. Yeah. Like and also let them know too. It's like, please, like the next time, like keep bringing your ideas. Quit. Yeah, like, yeah, don't like quit. we're and going like, this way because of why. Like, and yeah, it's when bitterness starts to set root is when is when we won't be able to function right. anymore. And so, what people ultimately do if they feel like they're like a part, like they're they're presenting suggestions and they feel like they're never listened to yeah, and they don't yeah. get any explanation for it. It's oh, like, yeah. well, why should I even care? Why should I say anything? Oh, they dude. don't listen to me. So even the the oh, simple yeah. act of going back to them, you're like, oh, hey, yeah. I appreciate how you weighed in on this oh, yeah. xyz we're gonna go this direction i believe this is the right thing oh, yeah. but like thank you yep and exactly. keep coming because like that was that helped up like sometimes like just getting opinions that are not ultimately what you're gonna do yeah, but like you. that's good and can be affirming oh yeah or like kind of challenging but like can lead you to yeah a stronger conclusion oh yeah because you're not just hearing what's in your own brain or yes men or whatever the thing exactly. is like, you need to hear different ideas absolutely it's like the, the why behind the what, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like with like my own kids, like, like I, I, I can't speak necessarily for your dad, but I feel like definitely I can speak for our dads. Like our dads didn't give us the why behind the what, like they did not hook us up with, you know, like, Hey, this is why I'm doing this. Or this yeah. is why I did it. Yeah. It's to protect you. It's to show you that I love you. It's mm. to this, this, and this. I never had that growing up. Like, ever it was like do it and do it now <laughs> and don't say anything back you know Correct. and so that's how i was raised and like I, I just never felt like that was that never made me better like that mm. like that never made me like you know maybe in the long run but in the short time it just did not really make me better or stronger it's when i actually saw like the i can i can speak to you know on one hand the vulnerable moments that my own father had with me where he actually gave me the why behind yeah. the what, and I can, I memorized every single yeah, one of impactful. them. And they've shaped, they've yeah. shaped me now. And so with that, it's like with my kids and like with that, those that are underneath me in leadership, like, like, Hey, let me allow me to explain it to you so that you can understand why. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, you might not like the answer. You might not still agree with me, but I want to right. give you that why behind yeah. the what, not to appease you, not to make my stomach feel better. It's because I truly want you to know that you are seen. Mm -hmm. You are a part of this. I want to know your honest opinion and I want to know it in the future as we continue to go forward. That's mm -hmm. what this comes down to. Yeah. And so I think that that's like a huge, you know, balancing thing. Um, uh, like when it comes to leadership, I mean, yeah, just willing, willing to admit that you're wrong, willing to admit that, you know, you know, you know, just all that. But also like, I think another thing is just like, you know, 
yeah, I think it kind of goes along with this too, but what, what I just said, but like vulnerability, mm-hmm. like being very vulnerable, open, real, honest, like really just sharing through it. Um, you know, obviously you want to keep a vision being the spearhead, um, but a vision should never trump caring for people. Mm-hmm. A vision should never trump coming alongside someone. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And so that's a crucial thing when it comes to leadership where I'm not going to step over others just to get to a vision. I'm actually going to spend the time to intimately process through, Mm -hmm. talk through. And so, yeah, I mean, you're still going to make people upset though. You know, that just happens, you know, it just happens. Um, But that's definitely a big thing as well. Um, What was your second question? Oh, just like where you have looked. I mean, yeah, obviously you can, where am I getting a lot of that from? Yeah. Maybe specific people, but like yeah. other, if it's texts, if it's yeah. stuff you listen to. What? So, I mean, I have, uh, so I'm very blessed to have some people in my life. And, and uh, what's, what's beautiful about it is, and I think that everybody should process this, that not one leader is what you need for every area. Correct. If, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And so like you have mentors and leaders that you can go to about certain things. There's certain relationships um, where you can go to and you can, unwind properly like there's just all the above um and definitely there's different seasons where you need specific Mm -hmm. help in a specific area you Mm -hmm. know and so i have like a a a mentor that is is very very much so like a dad-like figure so when i talk to him we're not necessarily talking numbers we're not talking like like how's my services looking like Mm -hmm. you know i'm really just kind of like sharing my heart a little bit and you know and and he's not even expecting me to ask about him. Like, he's mm-hmm. just like, Hey, I want to listen and I'm going to tell you, get back in there, you know, mm-hmm. go get him, you know? And like, that's kind of how that is. Um, I've been very, I, I mentioned pastor Nick at the be at the beginning of this, but pastor Nick's been such a blessing for me over the past few months because, you know, a, I do feel like he has a voice in our community right now. And so I'm like, I, I, that's another thing about leadership understanding that my voice doesn't have to always be the voice. Mm. That's a crucial thing. And so allowing myself properly, because obviously there's power in who is the leader here? Who is the visionary here? Who has God placed over this community, but also allowing as the leader of that place to be like, Hey, God has allowed this voice to speak in this season or at Mm. this time. And so pastor Nick has become like, kind of like, like the crazy uncle where he Mm. comes in and says, a, what I've said already, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but they need to hear it from a different person (laughs) from another person. (laughs) Um, or B he says it more like, like blunt. Yeah. Like he just straight up tells them, this is what you need to do. And it's just, it hits different because it's crazy. Pastor Nick, not, not Pastor Josh, right, right. you know Pastor what I mean? Josh like calm, Pastor. cool. Yeah, Pastor yeah, Josh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so that's been a dramatic, you know, like that's been so good, but also like, you know, with him, like he's two years ahead of us. He planted, or sorry, he's like four years ahead of us. He planted like four years before us. And so like, he still sees this. He understands the freshness. He understands, like we had a conversation last week where I'm like, yeah, we just had like, you know, an exodus, like, we had like, you know, 10, 15 people leave and it was really hard. And like, my wife is, you know, wants to quit. Like I want to quit, but I can't tell her that. Like, you know, there's days Mm -hmm. and moments where I'm just so fed up and done. And, you know, I got this, I got that, all this different stuff. And Nick's like, yeah, you're, (laughs) you're, you're you're about year two and a half, right? Yeah. That's, that's when it hit for us too. It happened, you know, this, this, and this went down and this person left and this person that literally like he, he was telling a story where he's like, I literally like, He's like, this is a person that I just care. I don't want to give up anything, but he just, I care deeply for a person, got them out of a situation. They accepted Jesus seven years later. They moved from a different state to come help us plant this church. And then literally looked at me and said, I can't believe that you're doing it this way. I'm out. Wow. And he's like, the heck? Oh, really? And so he's like, dude, like it just happens, you know? Do you like, were there like, like, did you have conversations? Like, how do people get to that? Like where it feels like it's, I'm sure like, it's like lots of things are happening. Like lots of time. He's been with you for two and a half years. Right? Yeah. Or they have been with you. Um, and then you have one conversation and it's like, what? Like, how, yeah. like, how do we not, like, how could we not oh, communicate? Yeah. 
a little bit more like before it's like we have to pull the band-aid off yep. like well we talk about the we talked about the root of bitterness you know mm. and i think that the enemy loves that because the enemy like if it's out in the open like in, in the bible is so clear about it it's like anything that's brought to the light mm -hmm. you know what i mean so things that kept in secret things that are kept in the dark they're not exposed you know yeah. and so the light will always expose what is in the darkness mm -hmm. it always will but sometimes when the light gets on it it's already right. the roots already there it's right. too deep it's taken yeah. you know what i mean but it will come to light no matter what yeah you bet your buns like no matter what <laughs> it's <laughs> happening you bet your you buns bet your sweet baby hawaiian buns. <laughs> like it is happening King rule buns. yes <laughs> i just pictured bob evan buns when yes. i was a kid mm. like that literally what i pictured but dude like it's gonna happen you know and so what happens is is like you know, sometimes, you know, you have a few different things. Like sometimes you have individuals that they can't express it. They don't know how to express what is going on. Yeah. You know, I don't know how I feel or why I feel it. And so that's, that's, that's one individual, tough, yeah. you know, sometimes that happens, you mm -hmm. know, and that's why, like, I want to preface one more time to anybody that's maybe, you know, listening to just a clip or whatever, like there's so many times there's so many different types of scenarios and things that happen. Not every situation when somebody leaves is they are horrible right. and they are terrible. Right. Even from the pastor's perspective, right. every single person that has left our church, I hate that they left. I am bummed out. I wish I could have been everything that they needed. Mm -hmm. I wish that yeah. Jesus literally came to them and said, Hey, this is what you need to do like <laughs> yeah. this, this, and this. I wish all of that, but that's not always yeah. how it goes. You know, mm -hmm. there's flaws on my side. There's flaws on other sides. There's flaws all around, you know, and it's like, and some, but sometimes it's just, some people just don't yeah. mesh. I think it'd be so easy too to fall into like a trap. I was just like thinking of like relationships, people, when you're like dating around, they get oh, dumped yeah. and you're just like laying in bed being like, what was wrong with me? Why did yeah, this work? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you're like, situation is like how, Inevitably, people will leave your church yep. if you're a pastor. Well, that's and how, doing for a long period well, that's of time. That's how my wife describes it. She describes but it as a break. I was going to say is like, how do she you that heavy deal with that that much? And you talked about Annie, like that, like just being very emotional and hurt, no. and like it. I'm, I'm sure as pastors mature in a church longer, like me, I would hope that does it ever get easier? How like I mean, like do you get like even like finding research? Like how do you just not? go to bed at night every time somebody leaves and be like, I feel like I wasn't enough because it's like, you have to, you can't put that on yourself. Well, I think it time. comes back to your identity knowing what Christ has placed right. on you and knowing that like, Hey, like if God has called me to a vision, not everybody's yeah. going to see my vision. Right. Do you know how many, like literally Moses goes up to get the 10 commandments, literally sees God's glory is shining with glory. <laughs> 30 days later, he comes yeah. down. He's like, my people are finally going to have the rules. They're going to finally see God alive because they understand right and wrong. Mm -hmm. And they come down and they're literally like almost naked, mm -hmm. worshiping a golden calf. Yeah. 30 days it took for them to forget that God completely saved them. Got them out. 30 days. Yeah. <laughs> 30 <laughs> days you know what i mean so it's like bro like it's people yeah. are people like people yeah. are people you know and, and that's that's what it comes down to so like you have you know you have the individuals that it's like you know hey i i can't process through what i'm feeling you have those that 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 mumble under their breath mm. you know what i mean like the, you know they have their opinions but they're not going to share it out loud but they'll mumble it to those around right. them there's others that start to make their own crew like, hey, like, let's make a crew of, you know, people that, you know, like, hey, like, we're against this, you know, this, this, and this. Yeah. And like, man, and I'll say this, like, anytime that a root of bitterness starts to set everything, yeah. everything will be critiqued. Mm -hmm. Do you see, do you see how Pastor Josh walked up the steps right. to preach his sermon? He walked up those steps like he was cocky. See Pastor Josh wearing like, a dangly cross earring. Oh my gosh, he has a dangly cross he wore a earring. When he got like <laughs> I think I read in the Bible dangling crosses Great. are of satanic ritual. Okay, but he's gonna Yeah, absolutely. Did you yeah, see so, that so did you see that Josh 
I don't know. I can't think right. of anything, but it's like, but it happens, you know, and, yeah. and, and those types of things, you know, so, but like, you've seen it before. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I know I, I, I can speak for myself, but I've been in dating relationships where, you know, or like getting to know someone and it's like, you, you find that one flaw, mm -hmm. you know? Well, for, I think what's, I think what's really interesting is, is that in any organization, whether it's a, a work, whether it's your church, whether it's a friend group, right? Yeah. As you get kind of more ingrained in that and you yeah. spend more time around that, the flaws and the things that are wrong become much more evident. Oh, absolutely. Just because you're spending time there, mm -hmm. right? And so yep. I think that a lot of times I've, I've done this myself of where I go into the situation and have this expectation of almost perfection oh, in yeah. my head. Oh, yeah. And then you get in and find out that oh, this is happening and that's happening and this is wrong. And then your mind starts going crazy down oh, this yeah. like rabbit hole, right? Yep. Um, I actually want to change topics almost. I'm fine with that. And I want to go to, we've talked a lot about your church. Yeah. And a lot about the people in your church. Yes. I want to talk about you. Hey. I want to talk about yeah, what God has been speaking to you about. What God yeah. has been putting in your heart. What are you speaking to the church about? Like, what's on your heart? Absolutely, man. Yeah. Um, so we just went through a, a series, um, and this is kind of just comes back to, to pastor Nick and, you know, and just what he really spoke over the men. And, um, that was back in February, but he, he talked about, um, Nehemiah and building of the wall, you know, talked about sword and hammer. And we literally did a series for nine weeks straight sword and hammer. <laughs> What? Are my dad's church in the late eighties and yeah, there are sword and hammer ministries. <laughs> yes, let's go. That's there epic, go. bro. <laughs> if you find an old t shirt, you better oh, wear that dude. bad boy. Let's go. <laughs> There's probably so, a tank top, a muscle shirt somewhere. Yes. <laughs> Neon green. Guaranteed. Dude. But yeah, just sword and hammer, like, you know, we really just, you know, like Anna preached a couple times during it and like, dude, I I don't know if you've ever heard my wife preach, but ooh, like there's people in our congregation that make jokes that literally are like she needs to go start Thunder Church and I'll start going there. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll leave this place immediately. Just go to Thunder Church, let her preach it. We're good to go. I'm like, you're annoying. And so, um, but now, so that's been great. If she did, you'd be going too. No, <laughs> you're no. like, I'm going with her. Yeah, dude, I don't have to preach every week. Hey, man. Um, and so, um, yeah, that's the other thing that I'll say about, side note, just starting your own church. Like, you realize that you preach every week. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, when I was in college ministry and youth ministry, yeah, I preached every week, but there was, there was some weeks where I could have somebody tag in or I could have somebody, sure. you know, or I could just be like, you know what? We're going to do a 10 minute message this week. We're going <laughs> to shake it up a little bit. I think we're going to have some worship. You know right. what I mean? <laughs> worship. Hey, I think the Holy Spirit's really going to fall tonight <laughs> right. at youth right. group. So we're not going to go that way. You know, right. like it was kind of, you could kind of, you know, you know, do that. Or, you know, like even like at the, the U college ministry, I ran for a long time. Like we would do like once a month, we did like, like we, we had um, like people share their testimony or share their story and stuff like that. And like, so I was like, okay, that's like once every six weeks, I don't have to preach. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But that's, you're preaching every week, man. You gotta have something fresh, something mm -hmm. new, something relevant, mm -hmm. something from the Lord. And it's sometimes it's like Saturday night and you're like, Lord, why haven't you given me anything yet? I have scribbles on a paper, but I still need to know what you want yeah. me to say. Like, it's just like, please help. Do you prep a lot? Yeah. Like, like, do you like write out like a lot? Like, what's that process? Like, I'm always interested. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, I'll come back to that. But sorry. my prep, no, no, you're good. <laughs> uh, my prep process is like notes in my phone, sticky notes, things that I'm like, I'm talking to God about. And like, mm. sometimes it's just like wonky, weird prayers. Like, it's just like stuff that I write out. Like sometimes I'll wake up and I'll write out a sentence and I'll wake up in the morning and try to understand what I was trying to say, you know, things like that. Mm. Um, and so it, it, it's like napkin, this, that notes in my phone, a screenshot of a Bible verse and Saturday like, bump, I, you puts know, them all together. Well, it's like, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, well, there's sometimes too, like, and like Anna will attest to this is like, like sometimes I'll have a full sermon done, you know, and yeah. I'm ready. And I know this is like, this is going to be good. And it's going to be awesome. And then like, it's like Saturday afternoon and the Lord's like, no, I've also seen Josh come with a whole sermon prepared. And hits like the first bullet point and then doesn't use the rest of it at all. <laughs> like, that has happened like that's happened before. Yep. 
dude one time this is so funny but one time i was <laughs> i went and preached two services at a church okay yeah. so i get there and i'm preaching like the morning like they have like a 10 a.m and 11 30 or something like that so i get there at the 10 and i preach this message and it's like it's like you are the danger like it was like that's what it's called you know what i mean i just talk about like like your authority in christ and you know what you are called to and like go and change the world and like it's just this epic message where i'm like yelling half the time and people are just like this is awesome <laughs> so i preached that first message brought down the house it was awesome the lord just like moved throughout it it was so phenomenal i'm like jesus you like you are here this is awesome and then i'm i'm in worship you know, for the next one. And I'm like, all right, God, like I'm ready to preach this again. Like, this is good. And he's like, I want you to go preach that message on forgiveness. And I'm like, yeah. I'm going to go preach on forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> I want to preach. Uh, on um, well, first, well, well, yeah, danger. but but also it's like, it's like, dude, like, I, I don't know if you've preached a full message and like the tiredness that happens. Like they, they say it's equivalent to an eight hour work day. Like when you preach a message, like just everything emotionally and everything that happens uh -huh. into it. And like, and like, this is something we don't talk about too, but like, like you are not just preaching to the room and to everybody that's in the space. You are preaching to the supernatural that are there as well. Like you are preaching. There's, there's, there is other things that are going on mm. that we don't see that's going on. So you are preaching to more than just the room. And so that it's just heavy and like the emotional and this and that, all these different things that happen. And, um, you know, you got all these, you got all this stuff that's going down. And so, you know, so then I go to the second service, I preach, you know, preach on forgiveness and like all this different stuff. And like, you know, it was really good. It was really powerful. I didn't prep that one. Like it's a message that I preached like three months back. He's like, I want you to preach that one. And so I preached it. And then afterwards, like, you know, the pastor comes up and he's just like, he's like, why, why'd you do that? Like, like not in like a bad way, but he's like, why'd you do that? And I was like, I don't know. I just felt like the Lord was telling it. And he's like, he's like, oh, it was really, they were both really good. But that first one, that was really good. Like he just said it like that. Mm -hmm. And it's because it's different style. Sure. Like, it's just a different style of, of preaching. Um, but the story that came out from it was yeah. there was a, a kid that came, he was like 21 had like came to the first service and was like, this hit him between the eyes. Like mm. I, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Like I'm going to whatever. And he had had like a pretty on and off again relationship with his dad and like things weren't like whatever. Mm. And so he was like, he's like, you know what? I think, I think this, my dad will really like this guy. I'm going to text him and get him to come to the second service. <laughs> Begs his dad to come. His dad says, fine, I'll come. Da, 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 da. And then he leans over to his son at one point, and he's like, you really bring me here to listen to a message about forgiveness? <laughs> no, no, dad. <laughs> That's not what it was. That's not what it looks like. You so know? Cool. And he's like, but it's yeah, like, it, it was, it was, it was a catapult in their relationship. It was something that really, like they look back on that moment as like, That's wow. So cool. But it was just like crazy. You know yeah. what I mean? Stuff like that. But it's like, man, it's just so obedience cool. is, uh, obedience is a big thing, man. It's obedience. Definitely a big thing. What was your question? <laughs> Going About, back. Like, what, I forget what it was. What's, what's, God, God what's God putting in your heart? Yeah. So there's so many, so many different things. We're, I mean, we're preaching through fear right now. Um, So we're doing a series called, you know, fearless, less fear. And it's been just really cool to kind of dissect and like really, you know, just kind of like, you know, call out the liar that is fear. Um, mm -hmm. It's been really good for our community. And, and so, um, but I guess for me, like, you know, obviously diving into that. I mean, a big thing uh, just in my life is just, I, I do not have, I do not have a second, you know? And so a lot of it right now is like my relationship with the Lord is like, it's like do or die. There's so many moments where it's the first time in my life where I literally feel like if I do not have time with the Lord today, I can't go on. It's like the first time in my life that I've ever genuinely felt like that. Um, I work full time. I have a church. I have three kids that are under the age of three. And so my life is pure chaos. I have my <laughs> wife begging me for a fourth kid like that alone. Just that, just that just conversation, like, that conversation alone, right. you know? So, but it's, it's, um, but I, I, I think it's just that the reliance of like the Lord has just been you know, just, it's been so interesting to just hear the Lord speak to me in the ways that he's never really spoke to me where it's, it's like a lot of like, 
like for a long time, it was like, you can do this. You got this, like, go get it. You got this. And now it's become like a, Hey, you got this. Mm. Mm. Go get him. You got this. Yeah. It's not roaring in my ear. He's whispering in my ear yeah. this season. And same message. Same message. Tone. Same message, but not a hoorah. It's a, hey, I'm right here with you. I got this. I'm yeah. Right, I'm right here. I'm right here. Don't worry. Man. It's been a, it's been a beautiful thing. Um, I don't have any, I don't have any quarrels. I don't have any frustrations. I don't have any, you know, it's like, it's funny. It's like bad work week, good church week. And then the next week, it's like, ah, oh, this happened at the church, but the work week's good. You know what I mean? It's like it goes back and forth. Mm. The only thing that's constant is just like him. So it's like that's the only thing that I can consistently run to, you know? Mm. So that's been, that's been like the most crucial thing. And like, you know, yeah. I love how we, we started with a pastor hot seat. Didn't even get to and I asked there. one question that was not on the pastor hot seat list. Oh, of was questions. it? Really? <laughs> and then we have yet now for question number two. <laughs> right, right. That was question number one. Okay. I think we're about an hour in. So the, are we really? We're already an hour in. Holy I think the shnikes. second one will be the second hour. Then I think there's a total of nine <laughs> questions on it. So holy shnikes! You're good. It's like, about to be. We're using for, like for your next right? telethon. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Anna will kill me if I come on four a.m. <laughs> Literally kill me. Yeah. Honestly, I. I love that. And we've had a couple of episodes or we had one episode in particular where we kind of talked about um, two different things, but we talked about peace and then we talked about how God moves. Yeah. And a lot of times we want God to move in this big, yeah. mm -hmm. like rambunctious oh, yeah. way. Right. Um, but a lot of times when we want that so badly, what we really need is still a small whisper in, oh, in our ear. Right. Um, Absolutely. And I just think it's so cool um, hearing you talk about your church and and what God's putting on your heart. I mean, what what is like what's next? Yeah. Like, do you just keep doing what you're doing? Do like what's next for you? Where do you feel like, you know, Lord has put this vision on your heart yeah. of a church and you got to Robinson. Right. And now you have. Yeah. This culture, this building, you have this group of people behind you. Yep. God is sitting there whispering in your ear, telling you he's got you. I'm here. Yep. Right? Like, where where do you go from here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is actually, what's so interesting about that is, like, this is, and, and it kind of ties in with those, those the way that God has always spoke to me. Um, it is, like, um, we just know that we are dedicating our time to Robinson we know that God has placed us there. And so it is the first time in my life where I'm like, I'm going to be here. Like, this is not, you know, I never felt like anything was a stepping stone or anything like that, but it's like, it's like, I always felt led to start a church. Like the Lord told me at 21, I was going to start a church when I was 29 and it was, and that's what happened. You know what I mean? Like that. I always reveal that to me. I, I didn't and like when I was 21, that wasn't a cool thing to do. Just so you guys know, like it became sexy when I was like 25, 26, like everyone and their mother started planting churches, but like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it was like, it was like, it was like, you were a goofball if you planted churches back when I was 21, you yeah. know, cause I would have been like, it would have been like 2011, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it was like, it's like, yeah, if you're a church planner, you're like 47 and you have eight kids and like, and like you're dirt poor. Like that was what it looked like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, you know, and so, but then you saw like, you know, you saw like Rich Wilkerson Jr. and like Chad Veach and like all these pastors come out and like, you know, and it was like, and it, what was crazy was, you know, I struggled with this because I was like, you know, no, no pastor, every pastor is like old, older. No one's like me. No one functions mm. like me. Do you know what I mean? And so I like looked at that and was like, I'll never be able to do that. But then I saw Rich Wilkerson Jr. Then I saw Chad. And, th and then I started to get the mind game of like, well, everyone's like me now. Do you know what I mean? So you it's like back and forth. Right. It's like, no, like I'm not like them. And so I can't do this. And now they are like me. And so now I can't do it because they're like right. me. Yeah. It's so funny, right? And so that's what kind of like, you know, whatever. But like, I think that, you know, now in this season where I'm at, it's just like, you know, I am called 
to Robinson. I'm called to this area. I'm called to serve these people. I'm called, you know, to love on this community um, that is called Lightning. And um, my heartbeat is never a numbers thing, um, but obviously numbers represents true growth. You know, that is true. Um, you know, if your church isn't growing in numbers, then what is their growth happening? You know, that's one sign. But then the other thing is like true, genuine growth in their hearts, like mm -hmm. seeing people move. And like, this is the first time that I'm just looking at our community and I'm going like, people are growing here. Like there's mm, discipleship yeah. here. Like this is phenomenal, you know? And so like we have a, we have a wide open front door and we have a pretty sealed back door right now. And it's pretty beautiful to watch people come in, feel so invited but then they, there isn't a very easy exit ramp. Like we're yeah. there for them. We're investing in them. We're loving on them. And that's not just me and my wife like that. Mm. And that's, what's beautiful about it. Um, you know, as far as vision, um, you know, I believe that Robinson is to be the center of the web. And, you know, I feel that we are called to, to plant multiple communities that are supposed to stem from this. Um, I believe that we are called to plant many campuses. I do not believe that um, this is my thought. Um, this is my thought. I do not believe that mega church is the thing. I don't think that that's the thing that's going to reach, um, the masses. I believe that where we're at as a society is small, genuine community based churches where there is significant growth, not just in the building, but in the hearts of the people as well. And so we believe that like 200 is kind of our ceiling. Like we really believe that 200 people is kind of our ceiling. Um, anytime that it gets above 200, you lose that smaller, more intimate community style. And so that's not a knock on churches that do it. It's literally just, I feel, and I see that, you know, creating intentionally those smaller communities. And I'm sure I'll get in a situation where now we have 400 and I'm like, oh crap, like, you know what I mean? Whatever. But we just see that as this, as kind of like a ceiling of 200 to 400. Anytime that you get over that 400 mark, that's when like, it's like you have to have great small groups or your church right. is not going to grow in discipleship, spiritually. like spiritually. Yeah. Like if you don't have a good, that this, this, and this, and like, you know, all those other issues come with that. So I believe that like 200 to 400 Mark is when it's like, all right, let's, let's move another campus 30 minutes away, raise up an amazing couple that can go and run that community, love on those people. And then I, and then eventually like, as we have multi communities all around, like, yes, we're the central hub. You know, and I'm just investing into these amazing leaders and amazing pastors that are now caring for those communities. And it just continues mm -hmm. to grow that way. Like, that's what we believe. Um, I don't believe that lightning is the savior of the world. I believe that Jesus is. And right. like, that's what's beautiful about what this is. Um, and so, but I'll be honest, man, our church is, you know, around that hundred line right now. And it's like, if we stayed at a hundred for the next 20 years, I'd rather be faithful to to Jesus than to anything else, you know? And so, yeah, man, no matter what, hmm. no matter what happens, dude, I'm going to feel discouraged. No matter what good days I have, I'm going to have bad days. No matter what wins that we have, there's going to be terrible, terrible moments where I feel like a failure. Yeah. It's going to happen no matter what. Um, but it's just trusting and being faithful. Like uh, oh, something we don't love to talk about, but just being a, obedient yeah. to what he has placed on my life and staying on that. Mm -hmm. Cause I want to squirm. I want to squirm out of obedience every minute of every day. <laughs> I want to squirm out. I want to do my own thing. I want to just like, like, Oh man, like I could just, you know, the church, we could just do this, this and this. Like I could go and I could just serve at a church. Like it'd be awesome, man. You know, like get into a church, maybe preach once a year. Oh, I preached the a bomb one year message. Like that'd be dope, you know, stuff like that. Like I don't have to preach 50 some days, a day, you know, mm -hmm. days a year. Like, yeah, that's, that's playing my mind, but God's like, Hey, if I've called you to it, I'll see you through it. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, it's true. Yeah. There's something you brought up that I think has just been like resonating with me. And, you know, it was really going back to this idea of like the one point it was like, uh, I got you go do this, get after it. Rah, yeah. rah, rah. And then it's the coming alongside. Yeah. And I kept thinking of this, the verse, um, when it talks about like really just like it's talking about how we look at the character of God as a yeah. father is like you being earthly parents know how to give good gifts to your children yeah, and how much more yeah. our heavenly father. But then I never really thought about that. Like, and all I could think of was like in a growing up, like in a sports kind of thing, like 
your dad or somebody is like your relative like get out there get after yep. before the game even starts yep right and now you're in the game yep and the, how much more powerful it's great to be cheered on before anything even starts oh absolutely that's amazing it makes you gives you the courage to do it yep but how much more powerful when you're actually at halftime oh, and you're absolutely. in the corner you pull it off and have somebody come up and it's like hey keep your head up you got this you know yeah. like it, like we're gonna be okay like so there is yeah. like it's like it's the same message it's still you got it it's just when you're in the fight there's a different way like that he communicates and um i think that that's a really powerful thing because i think it's easier to paint god like the voice of god is just the one way like, Absolutely. You know, get after be you're more than a conqueror i would just like think of all the verses that like were drilled into my head as a kid absolutely like you're not a victim get it and then sometimes like you need to hear that when you're down too yeah yep. um and the delivery of it is different it wouldn't make any sense if we were with our kids saying yep. the same thing to them in the middle of Yep. of the game necessarily at the same tone as if it just yeah. started it's like we need to adjust and god is yeah. gracious enough and loving enough to adjust exactly. how he communicates to us even though it's the same thing it's, it's so like good. i was just sitting there like just playing that in my head over yeah. and over. It's like, oh man like how good is god the father yeah that he even if we would know as earthly parents to be aware how much yeah. more the heavenly father oh yeah it was cool i think we're uh do you want to? Well, I was going to say, I was going to say, I, I think about it this way too, because it's like, you know, so we re, so essentially, like, you know, us leaving Pittsburgh to go to Robinson, that's doubling down. Like, you know, us making that decision, it's doubling down on the decision that we made, but also, like, it's a restart. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't care. Like, it's, yeah, it's what, 16 minutes down the road, but it's a restart. Like, you got to get people to re sign up. You got to get people to be on board, you know, because it's new, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's why we started to have a little exodus, stuff like that. And like, people realize, like, oh, this is real. Like, oh, wow. Like, you know, he's always actually Pastor Josh. This isn't just the fun little COVID thing he was doing, you know. All these different things started to happen. And like, what I've just, what I've just sensed, like, the Lord, because I've heard so much stuff about Kenny Pickett. You know, <laughs> the boy, the the Kenny Pickett, you know, and like all that Ben Roethlisberger stuff's coming out today. Like Ben said, I was rooting against, you know, Kenny because I just he? just somebody coming back in. He's like, I didn't think he was going to be anything, you know. He's like, but now I'm like finding myself like rooting for you. So I'm sorry that I ever felt that way. Like that's like the headlines of ESPN today and all that different oh, wow. stuff. It's just so funny, um, you know, but I think about it like, man, if I've just started, this is brand new. I just started in August. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. I'm in my rookie season of this thing. Do you know what I mean? In my rookie season of leading a team, being the one that they depend on, being the one to call the right plays, to carry out the right plays, Mm -hmm. to make things happen when everything goes to junk. Yeah. How do I respond? Right. When I'm down and the scoreboard's down, what do I do? When I'm up and we're winning, what do I do? Like all those different things because, hey, I'm 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 a Cowboys fan and we are distinctively known for being up and then Dak Prescott likes to just hand people the game. <laughs> mm-hmm. He loves to. And so it's like, he's we'll a little so, bow on so, it. But yeah, he's like, here, he's like, we're up by two touchdowns. Here's two touchdowns. Right. <laughs> you know, cool. Oh. Well, now we'll try to. You should try you. being a Raiders fan. It's even yeah. worse. Oh, <laughs> oh, don't get me started with that. Yeah. And so it's just like, you know, so it's like, you know, how you respond when you're down, how you respond when you're up, yeah. like all those different types of things come into play. And so I'm just like, you know, I'm not saying that to give myself some grace. I'm saying that to go like, God, like we don't judge a player that lasts in the league 20 years by his first year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, we don't judge it like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, even like Trubinsky coming in last year, it's like, it's like, yeah, he had his tenure at the bears, but it was like, it's fresh. It's new. Come here now. What are you about to do? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like, I mean, what probably wasn't the best example, but you know what I mean? (laughs) Like, it's like, it comes down to that thing of like, you know, you look at Ben's career, his first two years, like, well, second year he won the Super Bowl. I don't know. I'm not sure. What's the third year? Maybe I I can't remember, but it's like first year though. He wasn't, wasn't super, super. He's from Ohio. Don't look at that. He's not going to help you. That's a whole other thing. man. That's, (laughs) that's, that's that's a whole other thing. Um, and so, but it's like when you just, or even just like Ben's last four years, like, yeah, he, this, this, and this, but he didn't take us to a Super Bowl. Like you could start to say, I'm going to look at that. But right. it's like, no, look at a whole different, you know, yeah. and you know, just, 
I think God's just looking for faithfulness. God's yeah. just mm-hmm. looking for me to trust him. And, you know, and, and that's what it is. And so like, yeah, the, like, this is what's so, this is what's so interesting is like, I have a notebook, one of those moleskins and I have things written down. I have prayers, I have names and like, man, there's the names of people that are with us. They're in there. The names of people that, you know, that I impacted in the past, they're in there. Do you know what I mean? Like Mm. the names of people that I loved and they never responded the same way Mm -hmm. or those that I loved and prayed for and cared for and sought after and pushed and did everything I could. And, and they just ended up disliking me because of it. Those names are still in the book and those names are still prayed for. And those names are still my wins, mm-hmm. whether they responded the way that I wanted to, that I wanted mm-hmm. to or not. And so that's like the most beautiful thing. It's just like at the end of the day, like I, I'm here to make God proud. That's mm-hmm. what I'm here. You know what I mean? To honor him. And so at the end of the day, if, if my church stays the same, if my church grows a little bit, if my church becomes 16 campuses, like it's all win. You know what I mean? Doesn't doesn't matter at the end of the day, you know. Josh has got his own personal book of life. Mm-hmm. There, you What'd know? you say? He said you got your own personal book of life. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, no one be able to understand it though. <laughs> it's, all just, it's all scribbles and circles and right. things like that. Josh has his own his own personal language. Oh, absolutely, one thousand percent. Well, I I think we're we're winding down, but I really appreciate your time. Yeah, and I love. It's been a while since I've gotten to hear you speak. Yeah. And I was just over here just listening because I enjoy it. Do you remember when I let you preach at the U, what yeah. you said? Yes. We've talked about it on this podcast. <laughs> Have you really? Yes. <laughs> yes. For the people that haven't listened. It was an accident. <coughs> I said that God was a woman. <laughs> And then I'm and literally, I literally, he literally said it, and he was just on one of those like, no, 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 God is a woman. Is and I went, no, he's not. From the back of the room, back of the room, I went, no, he's not, no, he's not. And he's like, all right, yeah, I don't know why I said that. I don't know why I said that. Moving on. I'm like, get off the stage, yeah, sir. There's, there's, oh, there you go. <laughs> misgender. Uh, it, was, it was what it was. Oh, it was um, so good. It but so I just want to, I want to give you the like. Is there anything else you want to say to the people? Anything yeah. you want to say to 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 anybody who might potentially listen to this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, man, I think at the end of the day is like, I think that like the biggest thing that I would say to anyone that is, you know, just that loves Jesus, you know what I mean? Anybody that's watching this that like says like, I love Jesus, like I want my life to represent him, um, you know, anything like that. I, I think that the biggest most beautiful thing that you can do is just be obedient to jesus like it is something that is not we have not talked about this at all we have not made this a centerfold in a while this has not been something that we love to talk about but man like obedience is the number one thing that he is asking of us like Mm -hmm. making the decision to say like like I'm going to trust God with my thoughts and trust God with my finances, trust God with my relationships. Like I'm going to be obedient to what he is calling me to. Mm. And when you do that, man, like it's like, you might not always, it might not always go the way you want. It might not always be the way that you think it's going to go. But man, like the people think that we want things or we want that relationship or we want this thing blow up to happen or this thing to set off or this or that like no 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 what you really want is peace mm-hmm. like that's what you want yeah like you really want peace and that's what's so beautiful that he promises with obedience is peace you think you want this the shiny new thing the this the that the family the kids the this that all of that stuff no you just want mm-hmm. peace right. like that's yeah. what you want you know what I mean? Yeah, have all those things, but don't have peace. And Ugh, it's it's not even worth it. Nothing. It's not worth it. And like, that's, what's beautiful about it is like, be obedient to me. See what happens. Like, mm. whew, that's been, that's been a big one for me in this season. Big time. Um, it's, it's not always easy to be obedient. I think it's easier as a pastor. It's not. It's way harder as a pastor. I mean, it's definitely harder. Yeah. Anything else? Anything else? Mm-hmm. 
I think it'd be yeah. fun. Let's we did prepare some questions for the pastor hot seat. So let's first, first thing off in. the top boom here. off the dome. Look at first thing Ready? off the dome. All right, name is a word it like a stuff. quick yes. one line first answer? Yes. Thing, All right. First thing Turn. you think of. Who's your favorite Avenger and why? Oh, you're doing. I thought Star I thought Lord was gonna do it. No, Star Lord because he's awesome. That's okay. it. Hardest time you ever laughed in a movie theater? Um, it was. <laughs> uh, I I made a joke. It was at the end of us when the guy gets killed with the the antlers of a of a deer head. He kills him, and I everything got quiet, and I went, "Oh dear!" <laughs> and everyone lost it. Do you remember when we went and saw Avengers Endgame? I and think Hulk, you're about Hulk, to say Hulk. Hulk threw a bench into the water, and he threw it, and in silence, and both me and Josh at the same time went, "Yeet!" <laughs> Literally at the same time, <laughs> like it got real quiet. We both went, yeet. <laughs> I forgot about that, bro. All right. Next question. Right, uh, That's hilarious. Name a worship that. song that you'd be fine never hearing again. Oh, Oceans. Sorry. Two two this is the second Sorry, person said, dude. Right? I'm uh, so good. Name another song that everybody else is tired about, but you think kind of you still rock with it. I mean, no other name. I feel like no other name mm. got really like overplayed. But I still love it, man. I'll, I'd play it every week if uh, I could. Share a guilty pleasure that you enjoy, but rarely or few people know about. Mm. <laughs> can't do it. I can't do a quick answer on that. I'm trying to think. Craft mac and cheese. <laughs> He's more of like a sheets mac and cheese bites kind of guy. Yeah, oh, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> you don't have to be embarrassed about that um, at all. Uh no, I can't really think of like I feel like everyone knows. If everyone knows me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you share all your pleasures. <laughs> yes. Straight up. If pastors came to the stage like professional wrestlers, what would be your entrance music? Oh, dude. Um I feel like I just would want Stone Cold. <laughs> <laughs> Two for two. <laughs> Turn the grass. Two more. Two more. Uh if you're gonna have dinner with three people, living or dead. Who would they be? Kanye West. It'd be the weirdest dinner ever, Bull but answer. I would love, I would love to just hear him talk. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, I mean, obviously Jesus. Um, that would definitely no, Jesus be. Jesus doesn't count. Jesus yeah. doesn't count. You can't. Well, Jesus does count. Just not for this question. No biblical figures. Okay. No biblical figures. Yeah, no biblical That's figures very allowed. specific. All right. So Kanye Kanye's West. out then. <laughs> <laughs> hey man say what you want but kanye west it will be, he'll be known as a da vinci of our time 1000 percent. he is the key artist of our generation there i said it book it put it on the podcast put it on the reels yes it's the truth um kanye west um that's a really good question this is like I I feel like it needs to be quick, but I can't think of a quick. All right, one. all right. I'll give you I'll give you a way out with a follow up question. You all ready? Right. All right. Okay. If the three people that you chose yes had been the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, would they sit in one chair or three chairs? One chair. Okay. Hey, I mean, we've gotten a different answer every this time is, we've this is, okay, this is okay. This is actually shirt. something really really cool. Um, so that Chris dude with the funky shirts, mm -hmm. um. Every time that we're talking about like, you know, just Jesus stuff, mm -hmm. he always goes, um, and then Holy Spirit said, then Holy Spirit was speaking to me. He never mm -hmm. refers to Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit right. because mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is a person. Right. It's three. It is a person. It's not an it. It's not a what. Yeah. It's not a whatever. It's Holy Spirit. Not the Holy Spirit. You wouldn't call Jesus the, the Jesus. Jesus. I think the, Kanye for a they while do said he in, wanted uh, to be the Big Lebowski. Kanye, yeah, that's cool. But um, but just referring to him as Holy Spirit, mm. it shifted mm, how I cool. spoke. How I mm. spoke to that's him cool. shifted how I spoke to him. Mm. Wasn't an inanimate thing, or it was he's with me, mm. Holy Spirit. Hmm. It, it shook my whole faith. But yeah. God, I think I could have. Uh, I think I could probably find biblical texts that would say that they would sit in three separate chairs. Really, yeah. oh Hebrews. Gosh. You never commented on that. 
I mean, we've asked Hebrew several people that. that Jesus sits on the right, at the right I hand. I think of the Father. most of the answers have been both. <laughs> I feel which I feel like is kind of a cop out answer. I, I, we don't I, have to go. I, I, I hear. Really I hear the the sits at the right hand of the Father. I mean, yes. I'm not, yeah. Uh, last question: Red Crocs, hot or not? Red. Wait, what? Red Cross. Red, Red Crocs. Crocs. Oh, hot or not? I mean, you're you're definitely pulling them off, but they're you just have really tiny feet, man. <laughs> and so I I actually was like, are those his daughter's Crocs? <laughs> like, and your daughter's like two years old. I was like, bro, <laughs> like, like you have some. Eight. I got room. What's your what's your, yeah? What's your eight. shoe size? Eight. You're an eight. You're an yeah. eight. I'm an eight. You're an eight. You have a very small. Foot. You have a shoe size that's like you'll have bigger feet when you grow up. <laughs> <laughs> like that's your. I shoe remember size, I was bro. so it was such a thing. I remember playing like in eighth grade, ninth grade, like. Junior high, like getting your basketball shoes for the year, yeah, or whatever, and like it was like an insecurity. You didn't everybody else. Oh yeah, you know, I remember like at the time, like and my brother told me, he would order Doc Martens two sizes too big. <laughs> so there's clown shoes, right. but it would look like you. But you look like hey, you want to have big feet. Hey, hey, you how big are your feet? Twelve. It's size twelve till the day we die, baby. Let's go. You're disproportionate. You're five eight. Disproportionate. Disproportionate. Dis, dis, disproportionate. <laughs> Dude, I wear red Crocs and I'm disproportionate. I think that's a great place to end. Just right there. Just cut it right there. Just end it. You're We're done. Right. We're over with it. Do you get deals because you can shop in the big kids rack? Oh. <laughs>